This week on Bison Insider, I sit down with shooting guard Charity Fowler of the Lady Bison basketball team. And Hannah Morris sits down with Robert Davenport to talk about the Learfield Cup for the second straight year for OBU. This is Bison Insider. Welcome inside Bison Sports Network Studios. I'm your host, Jonathan Pulasic. The Lady Bison coming off a conference tournament victory last year and the regular season title, but losing in the first round of the NAIA National Tournament. Charity Fowler, the MVP of the SAC Tournament from last year, was interviewed by myself earlier this week to talk about this upcoming season and reflecting back on the past three years of her career. I'm here with senior shooting guard Charity Fowler of the Oklahoma Baptist University Lady Bison basketball team. Charity, thank you for joining us on Bison Insider. Thanks for having me. Now, last year was a great season. Uh, we talked a little bit before this interview about how your junior year was the best year that you had. Yeah. How have you seen this team progress throughout your four years? Uh, and we'll get to this season later on, but through your three years so far, how have you seen it progress? Truthfully, um, we've had great players throughout I mean, all the years I've played. Um, but as of late, we've really clicked as a team. Um, I think the team unity is definitely there. Um, we have all different aspects, uh, shooting guards, we have drivers, we have great posts. Um, so we have the missing pieces that we haven't had in previous years. Now this year I saw picked second in the conference yes. yesterday by NAI. You guys won the conference last year, so how does that motivate you as a player going in towards the season? Um, truthfully, it really motivates me. I know uh, Oklahoma City, you know, they won it all last year and we beat them at home court. Um, so we have the potential, we have um, all the, the keys to win nationals this year. And it's really exciting um, knowing that we have all of this stuff and we can transform that into a national title. And you're going into your fourth year, obviously. What are your personal goals for this year? And then also maybe some team goals uh, towards the end. See, we talked about this before um, we even started practice. We got together and got our team goals and individual goals. Um, team goals, I would say, is to not lose um, home games. Yeah, it's always been very important to, the, to us um, and to make the nationals and of course win nationals. Um, I know last year we were a little bit nervous going in the first round. So I think we're a little bit more well equipped. Um, some of us have a little bit better nerves this year and um, I think we're a little bit better. We can, we were able to compete a little bit better. Uh, personal goals, uh, my free throws weren't the best. So I'm aiming for, I wanna be at least 75% on my free throws. Um, and. But everything else, I just want, I want to make sure that I leave an impact where I glorify God above everything else and I play for my teammates and they know that I play for my teammates. So, Fourth year, like we said, what are you going to look back on after this season, after your college career? What do you really want to take away from it? I just don't want to have any regrets, truthfully. Um, worked hard. Um, it's been, you know, not the easiest uh, thing to do in college, but um, it's really been a blessing. But I don't want to look back and say, oh man, I wish I would have done a little bit more in practice, or I wish I would have um, just hustled, hustled down on defense a little bit more, or um, I just don't want to have those regrets to where I'm like, ah, I could have done this differently, or you know, I just want to make sure that I've done everything at the end of the day that I could do. Well, best of luck going into this year. Uh, we'll you. be watching you, uh, obviously, the MVP of the Sooner Athletic Conference Tournament last year, Charity Fowler here on Bison Insider. Hannah Morris had the opportunity to sit down with the Director of Athletics, Robert Davenport, to talk about the second straight year of the Learfield Cup for Oklahoma Baptist University. So OBU is the, only, is the fourth school in the NAIA to win the Learfield Cup for two consecutive years. As the Athletic Director, how does that make you feel? Winning consecutive cups 
uh, being the only the, the fourth school to do that is, is uh, a big honor, and it says a lot about our, our coaches and our athletes. Um, and and it, it's um, uh, when you look at the scope of our athletic program, uh, I believe last year all of our all of our teams, with the exception of four, competed in national competitions, and uh, so that says a lot in itself about our level of, of play and recruiting and, and student athletes. So uh, it's a big honor to be, you know, in in that four, and um, uh, we just hope we can continue to to compete for it every year. Well, how is the Learfield Cup winner determined? The, there's a point system based on uh, each championship, and each championship is worth 100 points. And it, it, it varies, the, the, the scale varies depending on how many teams are in the national tournament. For example, basketball has 32 teams. Uh, and so the point scale is different than, say, uh, maybe golf that doesn't have 32 teams. And so uh, where you place in the, in the final uh, championship uh, standings, uh, you know, so if you're a runner up in basketball, you get 90 points instead of 100. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of goes like that. And you can only count six championships on the men's side and six on the women. So we have 21 teams. We can't count them all. You know, so all but four qualified last year. We can't count them all. Uh, uh, we, we count our top six uh, on each side. And so that's how they're calculated. And I want to say we were in the 900 point range uh, last year. What does this award mean for OBU athletics and coaches? Well, you know, uh, until we were finishing in the top uh, four or five when we started getting trophies, uh, I don't think anybody really paid a lot of attention to it uh, because nobody really knew exactly what it was. They might see that Stanford's won 28 consecutive Learfield Cups. You know, they're the only Division I school to ever win a Learfield Cup. Uh, but they have, uh, uh, I want to say, in the neighborhood of 40 sports. Um, and so um, they kind of have an advantage there because they, they can uh, pick and choose a little easier. But once we, we got our first trophy for fourth place three years ago, uh, everybody said, well, what's that? And, and I said, well, it's the Learfield Cup, and, you know, and they started explaining it. And then we win it last year, or year before last, and now everybody's like, oh, now we see what this is all about. And, and so, uh, you know, it, 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 it just adds a kind of a level of competition and, you know, coaches and uh, more so coaches than the athletes understand uh, the, the competition level there and, and the pride in, in, uh, in the university and those kind of things and want to be the best. And so, um, you know, the, the ones that are winning championships or competing for championships or scoring in the totals, you know, they, they like to thump their chest because, you know, they were a part of that. Do you think that OBU has the potential to win the Learfield Cup for a third consecutive year? <laughs> I, I, I'll say yes. We, we do have the potential to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. The last two years we've had great teams uh, and, and the coaches have done well. Uh, this year, again, I think we have great teams and, and a lot of it just kind of depends on, you know, sometimes the luck of the bounce. Uh, you know, you win games here, you, you lose games here. And, and, uh, but our, our expectations are to compete for it, you know, uh, every year. Now that we're going Division II, uh, this will be our last year to compete for the NAI Cup. Uh, and then once we're a full-fledged member of the uh, NCAA, then, then we'd be competing for the Division II Cup. Um, and, and we're going to have some challenges there. I mean, uh, it's a different level of competition, but that sets the bar for us, uh, you know, to, to determine uh, how good we have to be and, and uh, you know, what, what we have to do to be successful uh, on that level. And it's, it's a high bar. And, but, you know, I, for me, that's one of the reasons that I'm excited about going to Division II because, you know, I know we have great coaches. I know they re recruit great student athletes, and I know we can take another step forward. Mm -hmm. So do you think that this award puts the athletic stereotype to rest as far as laziness and just that <laughs> athletic kids are not very um, smart? Um, well, I'll tell you, um, um, I, I'm starting my fourth year here. And so I can't speak to the years before just because I don't know the information. But my first year here, uh, the overall department-wide GPA was 3.01, and uh, which I thought was outstanding. You know, an athletic department at uh, above a 3.0 is is awesome. And we finished fourth in the Learfield standings that year. Uh, the second year, uh, we won the Learfield Cup uh, first time, 
and our oh, department-wide GPA went up to 3.04. And so I thought, wow, you know, I, I, I didn't know what to expect. And I thought, well, that's great. We, we jumped up. And then last year, uh, we win the cup again. And when we, we do our, our GPA calculation, it went up again to 3.11. And, you know, I attribute that to a lot of things. Uh, first, you know, great student athletes that are willing to, to uh, put the time in in class. But secondly, I, I look at kind of what factors led to that. And, and I have to give credit to the, the Milburn Success Center and, and the people over there that have put together, you know, the, the tutoring and advising and those kind of things to, to put kids in a position to be successful. And I think if you look overall uh, across the university, you'll see an increase in GPA from that, that department doing their job and really making a heavy impact on the university. And I think, you know, uh, typically we're the only ones that really calculate uh, a GPA because we're, you know, we're asked to do that by the NCAA and, and those things. And so for us, uh, you know, when I saw that, I, I, you know, I told those guys, man, you're doing a great job over there. And, I, and and the kids are doing a great job working hard and, and getting better in the classroom. And so, um, you know, I think that in itself, uh, you know, does away with the, the stereotype you're talking about. And then you, you couple that with, you know, back-to-back -back Learfield Cups. Uh, athletes are smart and can be smart. And, and you know, um, it, it's fun to watch that and, and see people's reaction when they hear that because most people don't know the GPA statistics and those kind of things. And when you say that, they're like, are you serious? Uh, and so um, uh, that is a, a testament to those guys and, and uh, you know, our student athletes and our coaches. Thank you, Hannah. That's all for this edition of Bison Insider. Be sure and go like our Facebook page at Bison Sports Network. Until next time, I'm Jonathan Plasky. Good night.